Well, that's my conversation with Zhou Chengyu in Hainan, the subsystem launch commander of the Wenchang spacecraft launch site there. China's mission to the moon has brought a lot of beautiful surprises, and now China is working on going to the Mars and at the same time planning to send space station. On that, I talked to Xu Yansong, Director General of the Asia Pacific Space Cooperation Organization, to find out more about how China plans to reach its space dreams and how the Asia Pacific region as a whole is working together with China toward it. Take a look. Where is China? On the moon, on the Mars? Well, we can see a collective number of nations that is uh, doing their effort going to Mars. Uh, in particular, in recent months and weeks, we have seen the uh, opportunity, we have seen the, uh, uh, the opportunity of uh, going to Mars on this particular time with the U.S. Uh, effort, with the UAE and with Chinese Tianwen. Uh, all successfully inserted to the Mars orbit and with some of the landing success. And we're very pleased to see that. Uh, where China is doing uh, is approach uh, through Moon to Mars. Uh, this Moon endeavor, including uh, three stages, which has been successfully completed, including orbiting, landing, and sample return. Uh, the sample return was outstanding uh, in recent months, and we have very uh, pleased to, to notice that uh, it has also re uh, received the highest uh, praise from the nation. When it comes to China's ability of innovation, where is it? We do see a number of uh, uh, comments and uh, some uh, opinions saying that uh, we have been to Mars and been to the moon, uh, why do it again? So. Uh, the Chinese endeavor is to find opportunities of innovative ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, we have landed, uh, before landing mission, we have the Chang'e 1 and 2 mission, uh, which are both uh, orbiting missions. But the Chang'e 2 mission take the opportunity of rerouting and repurpose their spacecraft to study an asteroid that's uh, more than one billion miles away. So that is one innovation point of the orbiting phase. Uh, we're at the landing phase. We have Chang'e 3 successfully landing on the near side of the moon. So we have rerouted and repurposed the Chang'e 4 to an international cooperation project where it will be landed on the far side of the moon. Mm. And that was also successful. And also based on that, we have also land, uh, launched a relay satellite uh, that is orbiting on the far side of the moon to relay data back to Earth. As you might know, that the far side of the moon cannot be communicated directly. So the satellites, as well as the landing process, was all very innovative ideas and was not done before. So we have uh, the opportunities of, of seeing the far side of the moon by our own uh, human uh, eyes. Space is natural innovative environment. And once you put something into microgravity, it behaves quite differently. Mm -hmm. For example, we have crystal protein, crystallization of proteins, uh, it, on the ground it's, a, it's the same format. But once in space, it can be a potential medical breakthrough for the future medicines. So space environment itself, microgravity, uh, vacuum environment, as well as the uh, extreme temperatures and radiations, all of, all of this will bring technology into innovation area. Mr. Xu, what do you expect? likely to be the next few steps and whether they are significant in terms of uh, Mars exploration? Well, the next step, uh, obviously, we have successfully inserted uh, the Tianwen-1 into orbit. Uh, it comprises uh, three parts, the orbiter, the lander, and the rover itself. Uh, right now, three are flying together in the same formation in the highly elliptical orbit. The, uh, I think two days ago, we had a, a maneuver of the orbit. The apogee and the perigee has been changed to uh, 40,288 uh, kilometers. Mm -hmm. So the closest point of Tianwen-1 to, to Mars is 288 kilometers. So we're using that opportunity to imaging the ground uh, to, hi uh, to uh, highlight and uh, uh, to choose the right uh, landing point. Uh, once that is done, we will further uh, val validate this uh, telemetry tracking and control system 
and also uh, validate the communication system so that we can deploy the lander in uh, late May and early June. We see some very specific steps taken by China and the United States, for example, about the exploration of Mars. Um, almost every step of the way in terms of public exposure, there is a apparent competition going on. So I really wondered, uh, Mr. Xu, from your perspective, where is this competition leading us to? Well, I think uh, competition will bring uh, the best out of each partners. And uh, this is also true for the U.S. and it's true for China. What's the best that the U.S. has already shown as a result of this? What is the best that China has shown as a result of this? The cutting edge technology that we have. For example, we do not have communications beyond the moon before. Um, any communication beyond that distance is uh, innovative for China. And also for, for Mars missions, uh, the lander and the rover on self, uh, the, the, uh, space, uh, the sky crane that they call it, has all the control technologies. And once landed, the, uh, uh, the power system uh, that is using radioactive acetope to heat up the battery every night and rove uh, during the day. And using all the uh, sophisticated equipments on board uh, the rover, uh, as well as to collect the samples mm -hmm. and locate those samples, maybe return them back to Earth in the future. These are unprecedented for the human resource and human beings. And uh, I always say that we will become an interplanetary species when we, once we live on another planet. Mm -hmm. So Mars could be the first step to do that revolution. So it, for revolutions, you need uh, innovation, you need new ideas, and you need cutting edge technologies. All of this will be combined during the competition process and during the cooperation process. We, once we all have these uh, capabilities of going that same destination, we will naturally combine our efforts. Mm. Interesting when you say we will naturally combine our efforts. Is it really going to be natural? Uh, it is uh, politically uh, difficult, but um, we are evolving. We are having new innovative ideas and pragmatic approaches um, with different political scenarios. Uh, there will be merges and uh, cooperations mm -hmm. uh, in the whole course of competitions. Competition can exist on Earth, but outer space, we should all have cooperations. This is true for the International Space Station, where all nations working and living in the same confined uh, uh, spaces. But for exploration of interplanetary missions, uh, efforts should be combined. So where is China? Still my question. You know, if there is something like a, a few mountains, where is China? Where is the United States? Where is Japan? Where is India? Some of your other members? How would you help us to paint that picture? There are many ways of, of evaluating a country space capabilities. One of them is the number of launches. Uh, former uh, Soviet Union, uh, U.S. had more than 1,000 launches already, but China is in the 200 and 300 category. Uh, however, China is, is rapidly growing. Uh, for example, last year we had 39 launches, mm -hmm. but I always say 40 launches because there is one launch from the lunar surface back to the lunar orbit by the Ch uh, Chang'e 5. That is another launch. Right. So it's 40 launches last year number one in the world. And this year we're expecting about the same categories and same, same number. So the number of launches means that we have a very robust and ambitious uh, space project. Uh, along with the economy growing, uh, I believe that uh, we're catching up very quickly. So uh, first, first uh, the number of, in terms of in-orbit facilities and infrastructures, we, we say number of satellites operational in orbit. Uh, U.S. has more than 500, uh, China more than 200. Mm -hmm. So the, the others are smaller numbers, around 100 and lower. So in, in terms of launching capabilities, uh, launching uh, frequencies, uh, satellite operating uh, numbers and infrastructures, I would say China in space sector is, uh, is very good in number two and number three uh, position. Mm -hmm. But uh, subtleties in, in particular, uh, particular areas of space technology, maybe we're a little bit behind, but uh, scale-wise, we're quite, uh, quite robust. Very interesting. Mm. 
fascinating stuff, really. Um, but you know, on the cooperation side, what is the state of cooperation among your members right now? What are some of the most promising and pioneering directions you're looking at? Well, uh, as Asia Pacific's cooperation organization, we're doing mostly uh, space application cooperations and uh, educational cooperations. We have education projects um, uh, of all member countries that can send faculties and students to the nations that have comp competence and capability of uh, degree education and short-term trainings. Uh, in addition to that, also we have uh, three or more most prominent projects. Mm -hmm. One of them being the earthquake prediction project using the satellite uh, Zhangheng number no. one uh, for aeronospheric studies. Uh, these aeronospheric uh, anomalies has a very subtle connection with the earthquake uh, uh, precursor. So that um, once that problem is solved, mm -hmm. where we would be able to have a very good early warning. Uh, of earthquakes. So even a few minutes would be significant for the human safeties and, and properties. Other projects including a, a apostles project. Mm -hmm. This project using a ground-based telescope to observe the space debris so that we can have a connection of all members. Uh, each country will have a telescope that form a network of observations therefore enhancing the capabilities of observations. Uh, other than that, also we have data service uh, sharing platform. This uh, platform shares the satellite data among all member countries for uh, agricultural, forestry, environmental and disaster purpose. So these are just a few projects that we are implementing and member states are proposing more projects so that benefits can, can be brought about to, to other countries. There has always been a dilemma many countries in the world uh, faced uh, during the Cold War. They stand with A or stand with B. Now, among your members, there are large countries like China, but there are also many developing countries. So some suspect that they had to make an effort to stand with A or B because they are forced to do that. Uh, as the Director General of this department and who has been working for your members in the region, what do you make of this apparent reality? Well, we try to uh, neutralize all these uh, standing issues um, <laughs> because uh, we are all developing countries, even China uh, also developing countries. We uh, take the form of uh, common destinations. Um, we, we take the call of that as also um, we take approaches to realize that uh, by sharing all the resource and technologies and projects together. And uh, that uh, not only uh, space technology, but also scientific missions, applications uh, of uh, remote sensing data, uh, earthquake predictions mm -hmm. and disaster mitigations, as well as education and training resources. All of these are to bring the capacity of member states up to a level that they can start their own projects and space programs. So this is very true uh, for some of the uh, old partners of China. Uh, for example, Brazil, they develop their space capabilities through the CBS, CBS projects. And our member countries, uh, some of them have uh, space capabilities and competence, manufacturing satellites, launching their own uh, satellites into orbit, and uh, these are true for Turkey, for Iran, for Pakistan mm -hmm. and Thailand. So many countries do have competence. And in this process, we try to enhance these competence instead of uh, telling them to, uh, to choose a stand uh, where it will work with. I think uh, cooperation is more extensive rather than exclusive.